Great things in the name of Him who is called Faithful and True. The kingdom concept for the day is called the true Christian. The true Christian is the believer who takes up his cross and follows the Lord Jesus every day. The remainder may be fine people, but they merely are churchgoers. I have come to the conclusion that there are not many Christians in the world. While I was a boy growing up, I had practically no concept of what a Christian is. I studied in a Catholic school, grew up as a Catholic. I suppose that makes me a Christian. And I assume as well that anyone living in the Philippines, being a Catholic nation, makes me a Christian. If you are not a Christian, nor a Muslim, nor a Buddhist, nor a Hindu, then what are you? A heathen? Who wants to be called a heathen? There are millions of people in the United States being an immigrant there and here in the Philippines who refer to themselves as Christians, sometimes as born-again Christians. In fact, the newspapers often refer to evangelicals as born-again Christians. In actuality, neither the newspaper nor most of the believers understand what it really is to be a born again. Being born again is not referring to placing our faith in Christ and being baptized in water. Being born again means a spiritual transaction has occurred in our personality. We have received a portion of divine life. Now, what does it mean to be a Christian? In order to determine what it means to be a Christian, we have to define what a disciple is. For a Christian is another name for disciple. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus, it says in Book of Acts, to look for a soul, and when he, when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch, Acts 11, verses 25 and 26. I'm not sure the believers are clear on this point. I think to many of them, a Christian is someone who becomes part of a church. But what a disciple is, is not all that clear. In other words, they might have imagined it would be possible to be a Christian without being a disciple. I don't believe. However, the scripture would support the idea that one can be a Christian without being a disciple. How do you feel about this? The disciples were called Christians. That's what the Bible says. A disciple is a Christian, is a disciple. So if we are going to determine what a true Christian is, we have to look in the New Testament for the definition of a disciple. It seems to me that the Lord Jesus defined a disciple, a Christian, rather clearly. Okay, He said, Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me, more than him, is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter or grandkids more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. That's in Matthew 10, 37, 38, and Luke 14, verses 26 and 27. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Luke 14, 33. In Matthew 6 and 24, in Mark 8, 34, in Luke 9, 23, saying the same thing. How many Americans who consider themselves to be Christians, even Filipinos, whatever nationality you belong to, fits this definition? He must, he must not love his father or mother more than he does Christ. He must take up 
his cross of personal pain and follow Christ each day. He must count his own life as nothing in comparison with his love for Christ. He must give up everything he has. He must deny himself. I'm not saying that you give up everything and give it to everyone you, you, you see. Okay, I'm not saying that. Honestly, how many Christians do you know who accept the cross? Christ gives them and set out after Christ each day, counting everything as loss, as garbage, in order to gain Christ. That's it. Do you see what I mean? We have multitudes of church goers, but how many actual disciples are there? Many church goers in America and in the Philippines and in other nations are fine, fine people, but not all of them are Christians in the scriptural sense of the word. They are members of the Christian religion, not members of the body of Christ. Hopefully, in our day, there will enter into Christian teaching an establishing of the standards of discipleship. Otherwise, numerous people who suppose they are prepared to meet Christ will be panic-stricken when He appears. So, let us lay hold on the Lord. We are not to seek spiritual formulas, methods, so on and so forth. We are to lay hold on the Lord our God. We Christians tend to be self-seeking. We are pursuing liberty and happiness instead of righteousness and obedience to God. Liberty and happiness are valuable, valuable possessions. Righteousness and obedience to God are even more valuable. As we reflect on the history of the world, we can see that righteousness and obedience to God sometimes led to loss of liberty and grief in the present world. There is no problem here because righteousness and obedience to God lead to an eternity of liberty and happiness in the world to come. Whereas, if we sacrifice righteousness and obedience, to God in order to preserve our liberty and happiness, we may spend eternity in bondage and in grief. Because we treasure our independence of action, our right to be me, the opportunity to do whatever we want with our life, we enter our Christian discipleship with severe handicaps. There is a cross that stands between our right to be me and the way of Christ. One symptom of our desire to be in control of our life is the seeking of spiritual methods and principles. How many books and tapes or DVDs are there on the market that instruct us in spiritual principles? How to be healed, how to lose weight, how to have a happy marriage, how to be successful in business, how to, how to, how to. I do not say, saints, I do not say that the insight offered by the mass of material cannot be helpful. I'm not saying that. I believe in many instances they indeed are helpful and profitable. But, but if we are not careful, we get into the habit of following spiritual principles instead of seeking, instead of seeking the Lord Jesus. It is said, an unforgiving spirit can cause arthritis. That's what he says. This very well may be true, but would be, would be, would we concentrate on forgiving or would we go directly to the Lord Jesus and find out what he is saying to us? Give the evangelist a thousand dollars and you will get back ten thousand dollars or pesos or yen. Have you ever heard this sort of thing? What we have here is a formula for wealth instead of a living God. 
Is God actually a thinking person or is He a formula for successful, pleasurable living? Maybe for some reason, God wants us to continue in our arthritis for a season while He is teaching us ours. Maybe He is working out something in our life while we have financial problems. Okay, but if you don't stop there, I've seen many Christians, they did not stop there, and God blesses them more than they could think. Okay? If so, we can give the evangelists every nickel we have. We still won't become rich. I notice that the closer people are to God, the less successful these formulas are. God apply, apply rewards those far off whom he is drawing to himself. When they take the least step toward God, but an elder brother who has served God with all his or her heart does not get the royal treatment. We are being made in the image of Christ. Therefore, therefore, there are any number of forces operating in our life that are pressing us into God while the weaker prodigal is dealt with delicately. Let's think for a moment about Adam and Eve. Did they die because they were disobedient to God? Or did they die because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Perhaps from both causes. But what do we gain from this lesson? Do we learn the spiritual principle that if we find out what's sinful, we will die spiritually? Or do we learn that disobeying God has disastrous consequences? Do we have here a principle we can master and use to avoid them or avoid death? Or is the lesson that we must listen to God and do what He says is the important issue, that of avoiding death? Or is it fellowship with God? The problem with the faith movement is that it invites people to have faith in faith. This is a soulish enterprise and not unknown in the myth metaphysical circles. Did Joshua command the sun or did he first look to the Lord? Did Moses challenge the Red Sea or did he first look to the Lord? Did Daniel shut the mouths of the lions? by proclaiming the word of faith? Or did God intervene because Daniel had been faithful to pray three times a day when it was against the law of the Medes and the Persians? Did Jesus Christ command the loaves and fish to multiply? Or did he listen to the Father and do only what the Father told him to do? I think if we are going to receive God's power in the day in which we are living, we must cease, we must cease looking for spiritual methods, okay? Whether they are prayer, fasting, giving, or whatever. I think we need to go to Jesus. We need to go to Jesus. We need to go to Jesus, finding out what He is telling us to do and do it. I don't know about you, but I am not seeking power with God. I am seeking God. I am seeking God. And I want God. And if He chooses to use me in His kingdom, fine. If not, fine. His kingdom is His business. I am His servant, His slave, if you will, to do whatever He desires. I have nothing to do with methods or formulas, whatever, for success because I know God goes in one direction and then another. He is not going to be bound with formulas or principles that force Him to act in a certain way. You can play volleyball with God if you want to, but I want to get on the same side on the net with God. When faced with a difficulty, we can attempt to solve the problem with faith, or we can call on the Lord Jesus for help, which is it 
going to be. In the last days, there will be a spiritual power we refer to as the false prophet. The false prophet is the one who upholds Antichrist and the world spirit. I will tell you who I think the false prophet is. I believe he is a form from a Christian who are seeking to use the power of God without taking up their cross of denial and following the Lord Jesus. Man is in control. Man uses faith and brings down fire from heaven. Man encourages the people of the world to be successful in the Antichrist world spirit of finance, becoming wealthy through faith. I actually have heard it said, Christians are to have control of the world's money in the last days. This is the false prophet upholding the Antichrist world spirit of money and education. The truth is, Christians are as sheep led to the slaughter. We are not the head of the world system. Satan is. Our role is to be a witness of Take note, our role is to be a witness of the person, will, and way, and eternal purpose of God in Jesus Christ. We are not of this world. We are in the world as a testimony against the world. The world will hate us just as it hated Christ. God gave us the Pentecostal experience during the previous century. I have been in the Pentecost for more than 40 years. I, kn I know Non-Pentecostal groups have known God and have accomplished great good in the kingdom of God. I have seen also that Pentecostal people have an insight into the Spirit of God that other Christian groups do not have. They will be able in the last days to hear what God is saying and to move with the Spirit of God. That being said, okay, but they have been led astray by a desire for the sensational. Worse than that, by the desire to use the Holy Spirit of God to promote the ambitions of spiritual leaders. This ambition leads directly to the false prophet, to the willingness to seek the power of Christ rather than the person of Christ. It is time now for us of the Pentecostal persuasion to turn back to the one who gave the Holy Spirit at the beginning of the 20th century. We need to abandon the marketing of the gospel as though it is some kind of product that we can export using the principles of merchandising. We absolutely must repent of our personal ambition and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not in competition with other denominations to see how many conversions we can obtain. God did not call us to develop pages of statistics we can use to vaunt ourselves. Our job is to bear a true witness of God's person and to sow the seed of the kingdom of God as He directs. Many countries where Christians are, is heading toward terrible judgment, even America. Our citizens are going to need Christians in their midst who are walking hand in hand with Jesus, who know Him, are hearing Him, and are obeying Him. Also, if we are to be effective, we must undergo moral transformation so people are not seeing religious zealots who are attempting to convert them to their own party line. Rather, they are encountering friends who know someone who can help them. Now we have this COVID-19 wherein thousands are dying. Or even when anthrax or smallpox, botulism, and who knows what else are filling the air when exotic poisons are in the water supply, when radioactive fallout is causing cancer. Gone, gone will be the flashy television evangelist with his endless pool for money. 
gone will be the seminars that show us that how to be successful Christians without really trying. Gone will be the soft humanistic gospel that brings a mixed multitude into the churches. What will remain will be those Christians who are living in and by a miracle, who are walking on the water, who are eating and drinking deadly things with no ill effects, who are raising the dead, who are escaping from the enemy by a miracle. This will be the Christian who will bring aid and comfort to the people when chaos visit our fair land. If you desire to be a help to your neighbors in the days ahead, then draw near to Jesus, then draw near to Jesus. Tell Him you are thankful for the spiritual knowledge you have, but what you primarily desire is a close walk, a close walk with Him. Hallelujah. Get to know Him. He always sits as king of the flood, no matter how water rages. It is Jesus who will save us in the last days, not our knowledge of spiritual principles or our ability to have faith or to speak the creative word, but the Lord Jesus himself. We charismatics have gotten off the track in some instances. We need to seize our metaphysical antics and get back to the one who holds the world in his hands. He will be our fortress through the days of physical and moral horrors that are approaching our countries. And he is our fortress. Today, even thousands are dying physically and spiritually. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will, he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Thank you so much for watching, Saint. If you found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button, okay? And share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself spiritually and grow your church as well. God bless, and I will see you on the next one.